So as you might have guessed, I'm going to speak about uh, IBs and how to build them generically using some kind of uh, Mac. So my talk is going to be somewhat classical. First, I'll try to explain uh, why we thought it was an important problem, how people already tried to tackle it, and how we managed to solve this issue. Then I'll present our new primitives at Sunafine Mac, so how we define that, what the security property around, and we propose to instantiation to show that it's easy to build. And then I'll try to explain how we move from an affine Mac to an identity-based encryption. So an identity-based encryption, it's a nice primitive that was introduced by Adi Shamir, where you have two users, Alice and Bob, and as usual, Alice wants to transmit to Bob some encrypted message. But contrary to the standard setting, Bob don't, don't have a public, doesn't have a public key. And so Alice is reduced to use Bob identity to be able to encrypt the message. And the identity can be anything. It can be a phone number, an email address, uh, the IACR membership number, if you want. So let's go back into the story. So the problem was introduced in 84. Then we needed to wait for 2001 to see the first instantiation by Bonnet Franklin and Cox in the random oracle model. Then if we waited a little longer, we have the first instantiation in the standard model by Bonnet Boyan and Waters. And waiting a little more, you have instantiation by Waters and last year by Shannon V using the dual system framework. And sorry, last year uh, paper, uh, last year crypto paper was the first uh, uh, IB proven with a tight reduction. And in fact, you have plenty of other scheme, but every time you have an added construction that starts from nothing. And that's not really interesting because what we like to have is, a, is to have a generic way to build an IB, so to have a primitive from which we can start, and we know that if we have this primitive, then we will be able to have an IB. So for example, for signature, we know that we can start from one-way function and be able to build a signature. For CCA2 encryption, we know that as soon as we have a hash proof system, we can have a hash proof um, CCA2 encryption. But for IB, we don't really know. So if we consider a map of uh, some uh, standard primitive in cryptography, so IB, signature, and Mac, we know thanks to the narrow transform that you can, starting from an IB, you can have a signature. The public key and secret key of the signature are going to be the public key and secret key of the IB. The signature itself will simply be the user key generation from the IB. And to verify the signature, you simply encrypt a message under the identity, uh, under the message of the signature, and you try to decrypt using the signature. If you recover what you picked at the beginning, then the signature is valid. In 89, there was another transformation from a Mac plus some non-interactive zero knowledge proof to a signature. Now this time, you commit to the, public key, to the secret key of the Mac, and to generate a signature, you are going to build a Mac on the message and then do a zero knowledge proof that the Mac is valid with respect to the committed secret key. So of course, you can go from a signature to a Mac by simply not publishing the public key. And for completeness, there was a transformation in 2012 from an IB to a Mac. But as you can see, none of these arrow end up on IB, and we wanted to try to find a way to do so. So let's come back to the transformation from Mac plus NISIC to signature. So as I say, you start from the secret key of the Mac. You commit the secret key with some randomness. And you're going to keep the secret key of the Mac and the randomness as your secret key for the signature. And then to sign a message, you simply compute the Mac on the, mix, on the message using the secret key. And then you do your zero knowledge proof that indeed this, this Mac is valid. So as I said before, valid means uh, it's in the, with respect to the secret key committed previously. And to verify the validity of the signature, you simply verify the validity of the NISIC. So OK. Now let's try to do a parallel with the now transform. So now what happens if instead of wanting to build a signature, we try to build an IB? So first, we replace the name of the scheme, so that's the easy part. Then we know in the now transform the secret key of the, the IB is the secret key of the signature. The public key of the IB is the public key of the signature. So nothing changes. Then we know that the user key generation in the IB is the signature. So let's say that, OK, here we can still do it. 
And now that's the tricky part because the verification of the signature is supposed to be the combination of two algorithms from the IB because you are going to decrypt an encryption. And here we are somewhat stuck because we need to define two functions using only one algorithm that's supposed to output a bit. So that's what we are going to propose, is to find a way to use this verification algorithm to define encryption and decryption. And for that, the idea is that we are going to need to exploit some kind of underlying structure in the combination Mac plus NISIC. So here, uh, that's what we propose, how to build an IB and even a hierarchical IB using an affine Mac and pairings or any system that's somewhat affine with an ASIC. So we are going to show how to build an asymmetric primitive using a symmetric primitive. And so an affine Mac is just going to give us a set of affine equation or affine relation. And the pairings, for example, are going to give us some kind of zero knowledge proof that are going to be some tweaked uh, growth style proof and an affine verification. And so those affine properties are going to help us define our two algorithm encryption and decryption, because intuitively, the gross size verification, it's a pairing product equation with elements that are going to come from the signer and elements that are going to be public at the beginning. So to encrypt the message, you are going to rely only on the public element at the beginning. And to decrypt the message, you are going to use the rest of the equation that rely on the secret key, on the secret element. So um, now let's move to a fine Mac. So as it was uh, explained already lots of time yesterday, we are going to use the bracket notation to simplify the writing in our scheme. So the bracket notation, you have a group that generated uh, by some group element G, a matrix of a scalar. And when we denote the matrix the, with a bracket around, it's just G raised to the scalar. So a Mac is a set of three algorithms a setup algorithm that's going to generate a secret key, a tag algorithm that takes a message and the secret key and outputs a value, and a verification algorithm that takes the secret key, the message, and the tag, and checks that the tag is indeed valid under the secret key with respect to the message. So here, for our affine Mac, we are going to want the tag to have some specific shape. So first, a random vector, T, that's going to be completely independent from the message and the secret key. And then an element U that's going to link uh, T, the secret key, and the message together. And this part U is what we are going to call affine. So let's go a little more into the detail. So the secret key is going to be in two parts. So first, a set of vector X. So that's going to be in blue for the rest of the talk. And then a set of uh, scalars X prime that's going to be the second part of the secret key. So to tag the message, so first we generate a T at random. So random will depend on the security assumptions that we use. It can either be uniform or uh, sample according to some distribution. And uh, U is going to be our tag. So it's going to be affine. So we are going to have uh, two sets of public functions, fi and f prime i. And we are going to compute the sum of the fi applied on the message times the first part of the secret key times t, plus the sum of the other function uh, multiplied by the second part of the secret key. So this fi really, will really shape our instantiation, and then and they can be anything. So we can consider fi to be the identity. It can be a constant function equal to 1. You can have some things like uh, fi is equal to 1 if mi is equal to 1. So they can be anything. And then to verify the validity of the Mac, you simply take the tag, use T to recompute the value U, and check if it's equal or not. OK. So for the security of our scheme, we are going to define a slight variant of the standard security of the, Mac, of the tag. So usually, you, we rely on UFCMA. So that's uh, after creating several tags, the adversary should not be able to generate a new one. And here, instead, we are going to use the decisional variant. So after creating several tags, the adversary will ask for a tag on a message, and he has to decide if the simulator gives him the real tag or a random value. So intuitively, a PRCMA scheme is, uh, should be UFCMA, but the other, the other reaction is not necessarily the case. 
So we are going to, in the paper, we put two instantiation. The first one is based on the variation of the now Rangon PRF. So we are going to use a randomized version and affine. So instead of considering the product of the exponent, we are going to have the sum of the exponent. And we show the security under any matrix Diffie-Hellman assumption. So this includes uh, any k linear assumption, the uniform assumption, or the cascade assumption that was uh, presented yesterday. So the matrix Diffie-Hellman assumption was also introduced last year at crypto. So to give a little more detail, so the tag here is just a random vector in the ZQ to the k. And the, so, and the tag u, is going to be simply uh, the sum of uh, the key whereas, uh, corresponding to the value of the bit of the message. So we define function fib that are equal to one if mi is equal to b. And for the f prime, we only consider one value uh, x prime at random. So such construction was already implicit in last year's crypto paper from TNNV. So as you can see, we need to define lots of uh, xi values. So we are going to have a linear size parameter. But using some random self-reducibility property, we show that the reduction can be tight. And this gives us a tight affine, affine mac for the rest of the talk. So another way to do that is to use a hash proof system. So in 2012, it, it was shown that the hash proof system implies a EUF CMA mac. So in this paper, we show that the uh, Kellin based hash proof system or matrix based hash proof system implies a PRCMA affine MAC. So once again, we show that it can be instantiated uh, under, uh, under any matrix diffie Hellman assumption, so especially the K-linear assumption. So the tag is a little different. Now T is sample at random in ZQ to the K plus one, but in fact in a space, uh, in a subspace of dimension K. The tag is way simpler because we are going to have only two F function, a uh, function F zero that will be constant equal to one, and a function F one that's simply going to be the identity on the message. So in fact, we show that we can uh, have uh, even more F function if we want, but that's not useful. And so the nice thing with this construction is that we have constant parameter. However, we have a loose reduction because we are going to, in the, in the security proof, we are going to have a sequence of game where we are going to change the query one by one. So now we have shown that we can instantiate a affine Mac. Let's move to IB. So if you remember the first transformation, so we start from the secret key of the Mac. We are going to commit the secret key, so for each part of the secret key, we pick new random. We commit to those random. So for simplicity, you can imagine some kind of generalized Pedersen commitment. We just need the commitment. If the commitment is perfectly hiding, it's more than enough. So we are going to have a set of commitments in the public key. To do the user key generation, so the first two lines, we are going to use the Mac, simply without uh, any other consideration. And the last line is going some kind of uh, proof of opening uh, of the Mac with respect to the committed secret keys. And so here we use the same function f, but instead of using the value x of the secret key, we use the randomness used uh, to commit the secret key. So just to simplify the notation, we are going to note uh, big F, this function. And the only thing that you need to know is that, is that they are somewhat linear in the randomness used. So T and one. So to encrypt a message, uh, someone is going to pick S at random. So once again, random uh, is to take, uh, depending on the security assumption that you use. He's going to compute a cipher text. So that's F, those function F computed for now because we don't, uh, the user that encrypts don't know the secret key of the Mac. He's just going to use a public key. So Z, the value commit, the commit month for the random s, and the key is now going to be the function f prime on id for the same s, using z prime. And to decrypt, so if both ideas are the, are the same, uh, using a pairing, you will be able to cancel the blue part. A user processing the user secret key will be able to cancel the blue part of u and v with respect to c. And the transformation that works on fx, fy to become fz will also be applied on f prime, 
and you're going to have uh, is going to compute the value f prime of z prime for the identity under the scalar s. And so we will be able to compute the same value key and so recover the committed message. And here you can show that uh, under some matrix DFLMAN assumption, this transformation is stacked with respect to the MAC. So let's sum up. So we've shown how to build an IB using an affine MAC in pairings. So we, instead of studying a complicated asymmetric primitive, we can come back simply to some uh, simple uh, symmetric primitive. It was proven under the K-matrix Diffie-Hellman assumption, so which encompass more or less uh, a huge um, number of assumptions, like the K-linear assumption, the cascade, and the uniform distribution. We have shown how to have a tight reduction using uh, a MAC based on the narrow angle PRF. And we can have a compact construction, so with a very short public key using a MAC based on a hash proof system. So to give out some numbers, our IB uh, is, more is twice more efficient than last year's IB presented by Shen and V, who was also tight. And in fact, by using an additional trick that's completely independent from our construction, we can reduce the size of the public key to be just linear, directly linear in the size of the message that you're going to send. So now, if we are OK with a loss in the number of uh, signing or encryption query, uh, we can compare it to the previous scheme. So we have the same kind of uh, size for the public key, a user secret key that's comparable, and a cipher text that's comparable. But our transformation, at least, is generic and maybe improve uh, in, in the near future. So there are some other results in the paper that I didn't have time to speak about. So because we have a tight IB, we managed to have a tight signature. And so we propose a tight signature under 6DH with only three group elements. And that can be then using the standard transformation, you can obtain a tight multi-challenge CCA2 encryption with a reasonable size. We are the first tight IB with anonymity. And we managed to propose a HIB construction. So the HIB based on our angle is going to be tight both in the number of encryption query and on the, and the important thing on the number of delegation level. And the HIB based on um, the hash proof system is going to be anonymous. And also, as a side result, we propose an identity based hash proof system. So we are the first identity based uh, tight and based on a non Q assumption. And this allows then to build a CCA2 uh, IBs. And one huge open problem that remains is to build an affine MAC with tight security and a constant tight secret key. But it seems more easy to work on this kind of primitive to try to do it directly on an IB. So thanks for your attention.